How is everybody tonight? Amen. We are refreshed and not refleshed. That means you got to press in and leave your flesh so you can get refreshed. Amen. <laughs> glory, 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 and glory. <laughs> oh, praise God. You know what? One of the things that the Holy Spirit was sharing in the area of, you know, he, he, he says my people get discouraged. You know, so many times people get easily discouraged. And, and again, discouragement will cause a disconnect. Remember, the enemy's out to disconnect us all the time. And when we dis get disconnected, we begin to re rely on us. We begin to take things in our own hands. And anything that our hands in, God's hands not. Amen. And he gave us something wonderful. He said, cast your cares upon me for I care for you. And what that does is set a stage to walk in the future. Come on, are you with me? Amen. Living in the future should be every walking spirit-filled believer's understanding. We are living in the future right now. That means that you and I must have a living hope that is activated constantly, and we are always making sure that our hope is alive. That's what allows us to live in the future. Is everybody with me? The world doesn't understand it. See, they, they fear death. They, they don't even know where they're going to. There's a hope, but they're not sure. And you certainly don't want to assume where you're going. <laughs> Hell no. <laughs> you don't want to assume. Because if you get there, it's too late. And I can tell you right now, everyone in hell is a true believer, but they can't get out. It's over. And you take that last breath and it's done. Amen? So we've got to keep, uh, it's our responsibility to keep hope alive and active. But the enemy's always trying to diminish it. He's trying to bring discouragement. He's trying to bring frustration and, and even when you're frustrated sometimes you can still burn through it you know what i'm saying but that discouragement and then the woe is me then the lowliness and then the voice every voice from hell comes out and says you're no good and then every, all the voices from your past come up and that's what you're doing is you left the future and you've gone to the past remember the devil cannot attack you when you're living in the future he can only attack you when you're living in the past that's why people have problems. If you're living in the future, can't touch me. Do, 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 do. Can't touch you. Amen? He can't touch you if you're living in the future. That means you're living in God's presence. You're, you're connected. You're, you're disconnected from the past, and you're connected to the future. You are, have a, not only a living hope, but you're keeping it alive. Amen? Go to Jeremiah 29. Praise God, we all needed to hear that, didn't we? Amen. Okay, we can go home now. <laughs> no, you can't lock the door. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Hallelujah. Jeremiah 29 and verse 11. So it's our responsibility to always maintain that Living hope, keep it active, amen? Keep it alive, because it sets the stage for always walking in the future, amen? In verse 11 and 29, would you read it with me? This is what the Lord says. What does he say? For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not evil, to give you what? A future and a hope. That's his thoughts. Do you know how many times things begin to go goofy and the first thing you're thinking, why is God allowing this? 
Oh, his thoughts towards me can't be that good. What have I done wrong? Hello? Why is God punishing me? Listen, we bring our own stuff on. Hello? God doesn't have to do it. We bring it on enough ourselves. In fact, the devil doesn't even have to do it. We bring enough on ourselves. Amen? But this is what he says. He said, I, I want you to know my thoughts. These are his thoughts continually toward me and you. What are they? To give you a what? A future and a hope. And what he desires for me and you to do then is to maintain living in the future. This is not back to the future. We're living in the future. Amen? We don't need no machine. We don't need time travel. We need the Holy Ghost. <laughs> See, those who are led by the Spirit of God are called sons of God. Being a son of God allows you, or a daughter of God, allows you to live in the future. You're no longer looking at what you've done. Amen? You're no longer looking at what you should have done. You're looking at who you're becoming. Is everybody okay? In 1 Peter chapter 1. Living in the future. First Peter chapter 1 and verse 3. Let's read it together, please. Blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again to a what? To a what? A living hope, an active living hope. Through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. You know, the power of resurrection power didn't just happen on resurrection day. It's constant. It says, we've been begotten again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to a what? Inheritance incorruptible. Is an inheritance something that's released in the future? So if you're living in the future, you know what's happening? Your inheritance is constantly coming. If you're living in the past, you're missing your inheritance. To an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled, and that does not fade away, reserved in heaven for you, who are what? Kept by the power of God through faith for salvation, ready to be revealed to you in the last time. In this you greatly rejoice now for a little while. If need be, you have been grieved by various trials that the genuineness of your faith being much more precious than gold that perishes, though it is tested by fire, may be found to the praise, honor, and glory at the revelation of Jesus Christ, whom having not seen, you love. Though now you do not see him, yet believing, you rejoice with joy inexpressibly and full of what? Glory. Receiving the end. Are you listening to this? Receiving the what? The end of your faith. How can you receive the end of your faith if you're not in the future? You can't. The salvation of your souls. Of this salvation, the prophets have inquired and searched carefully who prophesied of the grace that would come to you, searching what or what manner of time the Spirit of Christ who was in them was indicating when he testified beforehand the sufferings of Christ and the glories that would follow. To them it was revealed that not to themselves, but to us, they were ministering the things which now have been reported to you through those who have preached the gospel to you by the Holy Spirit sent from heaven things which angels desire to look into. Look at the prophets were prophesying of the things in the future and didn't even understand what they were speaking. They didn't even know. They were just speaking according to the word of the Lord. Verse 13, therefore do what? Gird up your loins of your mind. Be what? Sober and rest your hope fully upon the grace, which is the plan of God, which is to be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ as what? Obedient children. So obedient children, does it take cooperation? It takes cooperation to live in the future. 
Does everybody get it? If you're not willing to cooperate, you can't live in the future. As obedient children, not conforming yourselves to the former loss as in your ignorance. Okay, former loss, is that future or past? Amen. But as he who called you is holy, you also be holy in all your conduct. Because it is written, be holy for I am holy. Listen, you can't even be holy without living in the future. Because it's his holiness. Holy is established by the habitation of Christ. It's a living hope. Living hope is associated with living in the future. So it's our responsibility, again, to keep hope alive. It must be alive. It's our responsibility to keep it activated and alive all the time, no matter what you're going through, no matter what's happening. You're going to keep hope alive. You're not going to get discouraged. Amen? You're not going to be swayed. And you're not going to allow your past to dictate your future. Romans 8. You know, people are still allowing their past to dictate their future. And it brings discouragement. <clears throat> oh, if I would have done this. That's called regret. Amen? Now, sure, we, we might think about it, but don't dwell on it. Learn from it. You know, I remember when I did this, okay, so I'm going to do this this time. Why? Because it's gonna, I'm going to keep hope activated and alive. <clears throat> Romans 8, 18. Is everybody with me? Let's speak it, please. For I consider that the what? Sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. For this earnest expectation of the creation eagerly waits for the revealing of the what? Sons of God. Let me share with you. Living in the future, you are sons of God. See, we're already living in eternity. We're just waiting for the redemption of our body. <laughs> then we're out of here. Praise God. Snap, gone. Verse 20, for the creation was subjected to fertility, not willingly, but because of him who subjected it in hope. What is hope? It's the future. Because the creation itself also will be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. For we know that the whole creation groans and labors with birth pains together until now. Not only that, but we also who have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves grown within ourselves. Why? Eagerly waiting for the adoption, the redemption of our body. That's what we're waiting for. Listen, if you're living in the future, your next event is new body. Yoo -hoo. Verse 24. For we were saved in this hope. But hope that is seen is not hope. For well, why does one still hope for what he sees? But if we hope for what we don't see, we eagerly wait for it with what? Perseverance. That's called endurance. That means you fight through. Let me explain something to you. The body of Christ, right? There is the body of Christ. Now, there's a difference between the body of Christ in the body of Christ, there are those who are in the body of Christ. But there is warriors. There are people in the body and there are those who are of the military. There's a military of the body of Christ. That's why Jesus is known as the Lord of hosts or the Lord of the army. See, in the body of Christ, there are those who are, what remember we talked about, there are uh, biblical Christians and there are cultural Christians. There are also those who are just in the body of Christ. And there are those who are of the military, the body of Christ. Just like in the military, right, they have special task force. Amen? And these special task force, in the body of Christ, there are special task force. And you're in this room because God has called you to be he has sealed you. Hello? 
Not the or, or, you know. <laughs> but we're to be warriors. We're to set demolition, man. We're to, we're to attack the enemy. We're not to run. The devil should be running from us. Hello. So they, look at and those who aren't battling, the devils are running to them. Amen. They got to find a place to live. Amen. Hello. Amen? Amen. Psalm 37. There are many believers out there who are just in the body and have are really not functioning or fulfilling their purpose and call. And it, what it does is it drags the body because somebody has to make up for what they're not doing. Thirty-seven, thirty-seven, hike. Verse 34, let's go back. <laughs> We're going to replay that plan. Wait on the Lord. <laughs> Wait on him. And keep his what? His way. And he shall exalt you to inherit the land. Is that future? You bet your snapper. When the wicked are cut off, you shall what? That's going to be joyful. Yeah. Hallelujah. There goes that demon that's been tormenting me. Hopefully it left the person. But if it hasn't, they both gone. When the wicked are cut off, we will See it. Why? If you're living in the future, you're going to see it. If you're living in the past, you'll be part of it. I have seen the wicked in great power. They must be talking about Obama. <laughs> and spreading himself like a native green tree. Yet he passed away, and behold, he was no more. Indeed, I sought him, but he could not be found. Praise God, a few more months, and you won't find him no more. Verse 37, the wicked will be removed from the White House. Verse 37, mark the blameless man. Hallelujah, everybody say, I'm marked. From heaven. If I'm living in the future. Mark the blameless man and what? Observe the upright. For the future of that man is what? Peace. But the transgressors shall be destroyed together. The future of the wicked shall be what? Cut off. We are marked by heaven. We are not only marked by heaven. We are observed. We are watched. We are guided. And we are protected to walk in the future by keeping hope alive and active. Does everybody get it? You know, in us, there is future. Yeah, let's go a little further. Verse 39. You ready? But the salvation of the righteous is what? From the Lord. He is their what? Strength in the time of trouble. You know how many people go to everywhere else but the Lord? To what? Get strength. In the times of trouble, we call on the name of the Lord, and he strengthens us. Let me, that's future. So in other words, God is saying, look at man, call me when you have trouble. I waited patiently for the Lord, and he what? came and delivered me, and he delivers us all of our afflictions. He is their strength in the time of trouble. The Lord shall help them and deliver them. He shall deliver them from the wicked and save them because they what? Trust in him. 
See, when, there, when there's a disconnect of trust, man, we fall from the future into the past. And we can fall from the future at any time because that's what the enemy tries to do. He tries to disconnect you from living in the future and regret of the past. That causes disconnect. Again, I can't emphasize enough what the Spirit has been sharing with me constantly. Tell them about disconnect. Tell them about disconnect. It's not just about sinning. It's about disconnecting. So you can still choose, of course, anything without faith is sin, amen? But we look at so many other things about sinning and lying and cheating and fornication and stealing and all that. But there's that area where people are just slowly getting disconnected by what? Deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons. And not even knowing. The word says many will fall from the faith in the latter days. Why? They'll be disconnected. It didn't look falling from the faith means they lose vision. They've come out from the future into the past. Psalm 17. He will rescue us in times of trouble. Again, the world, our strength is in the Lord. The, the world's strength is in money and self. That's the world's strength. I used to say that when I was in the world. Once you get the money, you got the power. Because I was a maniac. And when you had the money, you had the power. But it's worldliness. Why? Because you can buy and do whatever. But it doesn't buy peace. Money never buys peace. And, of course, the love of money is the root of what? All evil. They might buy temporary happiness. But once it's used up, they got to keep spending, spending, spending to continue to fulfill their need of fulfillment. And then there's always fear of running out of money. That's bondage. That's not peace. That's the same thing as addiction. A person has to stay busy to stay free. That's demon management. It's not freedom. Freedom, where the spirit of the Lord is, there's freedom. That's living in the future. You are free. And one of your things you're free of, not to worry anymore. Why? Because you trust and you know that he's going to make a way no matter what. However it's going to happen, when it's going to happen. You're going to stay trusted. You're going to stay connected. You're going to stay living in the future no matter when discouragement comes. You're going to maintain that arena that has to keep hope alive and activated no matter what. Amen? Psalm 17, verse 6. Let's speak it, please. I have called upon you for you will hear me, O God. Incline your ear to me and hear my speech. Show your marvelous loving kindness by your right hand. O oh, you who save those who trust in you. From those who rise up against them. Keep me as the apple of your eye. Hide me under the shadow of your wings. From the wicked who oppress me. From my deadly enemies who surround me. They have closed up their fat hearts. With their mouths they speak proudly. They have now surrounded us in our steps. They have set their eyes crouching down to the earth as a lion is eager to tear his prey, and like a young lion lurking in the secret places. Arise, O Lord, confront him, cast him down. Deliver my life from the wicked with their sword, with your, right, with your hand from men, O Lord, from men of the world who have their portion in this life. Amen? Whose belly you fill with their hidden treasures. They are satisfied with children, and leave the rest of their possessions to their babies. As for me, I will see your face in righteousness. I shall be satisfied when I wake in your likeness. What a future. What a hope. What? Man, I, you know what? No matter what's going on, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wake. I'm going to stay. I'm going to keep this hope living and activated because like father, like son. We're going to act alike, look alike. Hallelujah. Praise God. You don't have to look in the mirror no more. You'll see right through it. You'll be living in the future. 
Romans 8, 28. Everyone say, my daddy loves me. In spite of myself. <laughs> Hallelujah. Romans 8, 28, is everybody there? Let's speak it together. And we know that all things work together for the good to those who love God. Is that future? Amen. To those who are called according to his purpose, for whom he what? Foreknew, he also predestined to what? Be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he predestined, these he also called. Whom he called, these he also justified. And whom he justified, these he also glorified. How fabulous. Let's go a little further. What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for who? Us, all. How shall we not with him also freely give us all things? Does everybody see that? How shall he not with him also freely give us all things? So he's not holding anything back. Amen? He releases things according to his time. The word says, do this, fulfill the will. When God asks you to do something, he releases the promise. The promise is people aren't doing what he's asking them to do. So then the promise isn't released. Verse 33. Who shall bring a charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is he who condemns? It is Christ who died and furthermore is also risen, who is even at the right hand of God, who also makes intercession for us. Thank you, Jesus. Who shall, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, for your sake we are killed all day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Yet in all these things we are what? More than conquerors through him who li loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor powers nor things present nor things to come nor height nor depth nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. All things are going to work to good. That's living in the future keeping hope alive and active. Ephesians chapter 1. Ephesians 1, verse 3. Let's speak it together, please. Blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has what? Blessed. Blessed us with what? Every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. Wow. So is Christ in the future? Yes, he's omnipresent, isn't he? So if we're blessed with every spiritual blessing with him and in him, that allows me and you to live in the future. Just as he chose us in him, in him before the foundation of the world. Whoa. So we are already in him before he created the earth and everything in the universe. We are already in him. See, our little peanut brain can't comprehend all this stuff. You mean I was there before I came here? Well, yeah. Yeah. That's why we miss his presence. That's why people like to get high. That's a counterfeit. You know, there was a guy, I went and dropped off some uh, bread and pastries and stuff at the Christian Center that feeds out every single day. And there was a guy waiting in line there. And, and, and I think he came here and left a short period of time and has been out on the streets drinking probably for about 10 years now. He looks terrible. 
And, he, and so he was in line waiting. And, and he looked at me. He says, hey, man, I haven't seen you in a while. I said, yeah, yeah. I said, so, so what are you going to do? You're going to stand in line for the rest of your life? He looked at me, well, I'm, I'm waiting for this, and I'm waiting for that, and I'm supposed to be getting disability for this, and I'm going to... I said, then what are you going to do? I'm going to party. I said, so... You're going to waste this life and go to hell? Remember who you serve when you die is where you go. I'm telling him the place was filled with people waiting. Everybody got to hear what was happening. I didn't care. Because I don't care no more. Because the Lord said to me, do whatever you got to do because time's running out. There's an urgency. Time's running out. The reason God's putting Trump in office to become president is to clean things up and get prepared for rap for the departure. And so, and he was looking at me. So th then the next thing he said, I'm going to call you. I said, well, here, call me. But remember, who you serve when you die is where you go. And everybody in that place heard. And I left. But, man, I'm telling you, time. Right now, it's no time to be weak or wimpy. And it's certainly no time to be living in the past. It's time to be living in the future. Because those who live in the future will make the departure. Those who live in the past will stay living in the past. Hallelujah. In verse 4, just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be what? Holy. We should be what? Holy and without blame before him in what? In love. Having predestined us to adoption as sons by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of the glory of his grace, by which he made us what? Accepted in the beloved. Look at this. Watch this. You ready? Read it with me. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of his grace, which he made to abound toward us in all wisdom and prudence, having made known to us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, which he purposed in himself, that in the dispensation of the fullness of times, he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth in him. Obviously, you didn't hear in earth. Because they're not going to be gathered to him. In earth means in hell. Hallelujah. Verse uh, 11. In him also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestined according to the purpose of him who works all things according to the counsel of his will, that we who first trusted in Christ should be to the praise of his glory. I want to go to Ephesians 2 and verse 11. Let's speak it together. Therefore, remember that you once Gentiles in the flesh who are called uncircumcision by what is called the circumcision made in the flesh by hands, that at the time you were without Christ being what? Aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of the promise, having no hope and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, you who once were far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. For he himself is our peace, who has made both one, and has broken down the middle law of separation, having abolished in his flesh the enmity that is the law of commandments contained in ordinances, so as to create in himself one new man from the two, thus making peace, and that he might reconcile them both to God in one body through the cross, thereby putting to death the enmity. And he came and preached peace to you who are far off and to those who are near. For through him we both have access by one spirit to the Father. Now therefore you are no longer strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God. Having been built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone, on whom the whole building being fitted together grows into a holy temple in the Lord, in whom you are 
also are being built together for a dwelling place of God in the Spirit. In 1 John chapter 3. In fact, we had false hope. See, the world only offers false hope. Amen? Only by the Spirit of the living God can release true hope. And then he brings it alive. He brings it alive because it's tangible. Hope is tangible. You can feel it. You can sense it. You can almost taste it because you're living in the future, not in the past. In the past, it's, it's dirty. It's tormenting. It's discouraging. It's fearful. It's rejection. It's abandonment. It's lonely. But in a future, living in a future, not only is the hope being manifested in the, in the area where it's alive and active, but you know that heaven is home and every, all of the, our family is home. Our heavenly family is home watching. The angels are around us. They're all watching. Everything is being accounted. See, the whole thing is being able to and maintaining. So when your faith is, ma when your hope is maintaining to be active and alive, you're seeing through the physical. No matter where you go, you're not alone. The Lord is always before you. The angels bear you up. God is always trying to get something to make himself real to you and everything. He loves to surprise us, saying, hi, it's me. You might have forgot, but I didn't. <laughs> First John chapter 3. Praise God. In verse 1. Is everybody there? Let's speak it. Behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed on us, that we should be called children of God. Therefore, the world does not know us because it does not know him. Beloved, now we are children of God and it has not yet been revealed what we shall be, but we shall know that when he is revealed, we shall be what? Like him, for we shall see him as he is. And everyone who has this hope and maintains this hope and keeps this hope activated and alive purifies himself just as he is pure. But of course, whoever commits sin also commits lawlessness, and sin is lawlessness. And you know that he was manifested to take away our sins, and in him there is no sin. Whoever abides in him doesn't sin. There's not a desire to sin. There's not a desire to have fellowship with darkness. There's not a desire to have fellowship with yourself. Or the past. There's no longer that. It's gone. But you will be tempted to. And when you agree with that temptation, that desire will become manifest. Whoever abides in him does not sin. Whoever sins has neither seen him or known him. Little children, let no one deceive you. He who practices righteousness is righteous just as he is righteous. But he who sins is of the devil. In other words, he's been influenced by the devil. For the devil has sinned from the beginning. For this purpose the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. Whoever has been born of God doesn't sin. For his seed remains in him and he cannot sin because he has been born of God. And in this the children of God and the children of devil are manifested. Whoever does not practice righteousness is not of God nor is he who does not love his brother. So again there's that area of cooperation with the Spirit of God, keeping hope active and alive, allows me and you to live in the future. Amen? In other words, living in the future is living beyond worldly expectations, limitations, and desires. We're no longer living for us. Everything that we do is focused on expanding the kingdom. What can I do to bring heaven here? What can I do to bring heaven here? How can I bring heaven somewhere? In other words, how can I bring God's presence? How can I bring Jesus? How can I bring heaven somewhere? Wherever we go, whatever we're doing, that's what we want to focus on. And how, when we ask ourselves that, then 
We're keeping hope alive. Why? Because you're maintaining contact. You're staying connected. In Philippians chapter 3. Foundation is what allows me and you to be purified because it's separation from the world. Amen? Philippians chapter 3. Is everybody okay? Are you getting this? Is anybody getting this? Thank you. Philippians 3, 7, please. Let's read it together. But what things were gained to me, these things I have counted loss for Christ. Oh, if we could just hold on to that. We wouldn't be grumbling. Listen, when you grumble and complain, you just stepped out of the future. <laughs> And let me share, the reason one of the things is when you're in the future, living in the future, because the enemy can't touch you because he can't go there. He has no future. Only we who are redeemed have a future. The enemy and demons don't have a future. But what the enemy tries to do is sway us out from the future by enticing He tries to plant corruptible seed. He tries to entice to grumble and complain. He tries to always like knocking on your shoulder to look towards your past instead of the future. Verse 8. Yet in, indeed I also count all things lost for the excellence of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord for whom I have suffered the loss of all things. Anybody suffered the loss of all things? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I could lift both legs up in the air on that one. And count them as rubbish that I may gain Christ. And be found in him, not out of him. Not having my own righteousness which is from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness which is from God by faith. That I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings, being conformed to his death, if by any means I may attain to the resurrection from the dead. Not that... I have already attained it, or I'm already perfected, but I do what? I press on. If I'm going to press on, is it going to keep me in the future? Amen. That I may lay hold of that which Christ Jesus has also laid hold of me. Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to the things which are ahead. I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Now, he says something powerful. He says, okay, now, uh, therefore, let us as many as are mature. In other words, come on, grab hold of this and grow up. Amen. Quit playing games with the devil. Amen. Quit petting evil. Quit putting your hands in darkness and see if it's going to bite, because it will. Quit touching those things that are unclean, and quit approving those things that God doesn't. Amen? Quit being a man pleaser and become a God pleaser. Don't be a wimp. But be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Become the warrior God has called you to be. Because you are sealed from heaven. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. In verse 7. Everybody there? For God did not call us to what? Uncleanness, but in holiness. Therefore, he who rejects this does not reject man, but who? God, who has also given us the Holy Spirit. But concerning brotherly love, you have no need that I should write to you, for you yourselves are taught by God to love one another. And indeed, you do so toward all the brethren who are in all Macedonia. But we urge you, brethren, that you increase more and more. 
that you also aspire to lead a quiet life, to mind your own beeswax, and to work out your own with your own hands as we commanded you, that you may walk properly toward those who are outside, and that you may lack nothing. But I do not want you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning those who have fallen asleep, lest you sorrow as others who have no hope. In other words, quit mourning about what's been gone. Let the dead bury the dead and go forward. And I've run into many people that are still mourning. Man, what happened? Man, I lost my wife. I lost my mother. I lost this. When? 14 years ago. Snap. Bend over and let me kick you right in the butt, dummy. I mean, how stupid can we be and still breathe? Mourning for something that has. Ben, we should be rejoicing. The first thing I ask them, were they saved? Yeah. What's your problem? Amen. If they tell me, well, I don't know, then I don't say anything. Well, God's got a plan. <laughs> <laughs> That's when you go to their worldly saying, well, God knows her heart. <laughs> You know, when I first got saved, I was bold about everything. I mean, it didn't matter. He wasn't saying, well, then they went to hell. <laughs> I mean, what, it's not, no sense of mourning over it now. If they're in hell, they're in hell. You know what I mean? <laughs> Ain't nothing you can do about it. But, of course, it tormented that person. <laughs> yeah, they went to hell. Oh, God, really? Oh. <laughs> so I stopped saying that. Now I tell them before they go to hell. Anyways, <laughs> so he doesn't want us to be ignorant about those who have fallen asleep. Amen? Verse 14, for if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so God will bring with him those who sleep in Jesus. For this we say to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord will by no means precede those who are asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet snap of God. And the dead in Christ will what? Rise first. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up, raptured, together with him in the clouds to meet the Lord where? In the air. And thus we shall always be with the Lord. So therefore, comfort one another with these words. See, so we are looking for this, aren't we? That's living in the future. Now, it doesn't mean, look at it. Some people are really goofy on this. So they're not doing anything. They're just waiting to go home. Well, that's not how we're to live. Amen. And you're not to go charge up all your charge cars and hope to go home. Because they're going to come and get you. You ain't gone yet. Amen? The rapture is a future event. This is a great hope. We must keep that hope alive no matter what you're going through. Man, it's okay. I'm going to get out of here one of these days. No matter what's going on. I'd like to go now, but praise God, I got a job to fulfill. Amen? We must fulfill our mission. And by keeping your mission alive... You're keeping your hope alive. Amen? And by keeping your hope alive and active, you're living in the future, and the devil can't touch you. Colossians 1. Colossians 1 and verse 21. <clears throat> Would you speak it with me, please? And you who once were alienated and enemies in your mind by the wicked works, yet now he is reconciled in the body of his flesh through death to present you holy and blameless and above reproach in his sight. If indeed, if indeed, if indeed, if indeed you what? Continue, stay connected. You're obedient. In the faith, grounded and steadfast, and are not moved away from the hope of the gospel which you heard, 
which was preached to every creature under heaven, of which I, Paul, became a minister. Now I now rejoice in my sufferings for you and fill up my flesh what is lacking in the afflictions of Christ for the sake of his body, which is the church, of which I became a minister according to the stewardship from God, which was given to me for you to fulfill the word of God, the mystery which has been hidden from ages and from generations, but now has been revealed to the saints. To them God will to make known what are the riches of the glory of this mystery among Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Is everybody there? Second Corinthians 5, verse 1, For we know that if our what? earthly house, this tent is destroyed, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. For in this we groan, earnestly desiring to be clothed with our habitation which is from heaven. If indeed having been clothed, we shall not be found naked. For we who are in this tent grown being burdened, not because we want to be unclothed, but further clothed, that mortality may be swallowed up by life. Now he who has prepared us for this very thing is who? God, who also has given us the Spirit as a guarantee. So we are always confident knowing that while we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight. We are confident, yes, well pleased, rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. Therefore, we make it our aim, whether present or absent, to be well pleasing to him. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that each one may receive the things done in the body according to what he has done, whether good or bad. Knowing, therefore, the terror of the Lord, we persuade men, but we are well known to God, and I also trust are well known in your conscience. For we do not commend ourselves again to you, but give you opportunity to boast on our behalf that you may have an answer for those who boast in appearance and not in heart. Future hope. It's living in the future, isn't it? Keeping hope activated and alive. And I want to close at Psalm 23. Living in the future is keeping hope alive and active. Psalm 23. Is everybody there? Let's speak it. The Lord is my what? Shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they shall comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the future <laughs> in the house of the Lord forever and ever and ever, living in the future. Set the course, establish it, perfect it, be steadfast no matter what's going on. Do not let discourage sway you. Don't let trials or tribulations delay you. Amen? Continue to live in the future and keep hope active and alive. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. We thank you for the encouragement. We thank you for being sealed that we may be your warriors, Lord. Be your warriors. Train us up, Lord. Give us the boldness needed. Allow our voice to be your voice allow our eyes to be your eyes and our ears to be your ears lord so we see and hear what you want us to lord establish our steps as we acknowledge you in all of our ways open the doors that are viewing and shut the doors that are not i ask that you bless your people let not the devil come and steal this word but constantly keep it sealed with the blood of jesus anointed by the holy spirit that it may grow and bear fruit 
for your glory, preparing us so that we are ready in season and out in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. amen. Be blessed and not stressed.